Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Whoa. I've been live for five seconds. Look at that. Okay. So. Wow. That's so cool. Let me. Great. Great, great, great. So let's go to our eighth grade assignment. So I'm going to wait for all of you to catch up. I'm going to go to. Here we are. So by the way, in case you've been struggling to find your assignments, you go to your Khan Academy account, obviously. Then you, um, you go to Fairmont 8th grade, and then on the side it says assignments. So you pick the assignments that it says Fairmont 8th grade. And right now, I clicked on manage because that's what I can see. Uh, but anyway, today we're going to be doing systems of equations with substitution and then some word problems too. So click on the systems of equations with substitution. All eighth graders should have it. You should look get some that looks like this. There we go. Okay. And before I even begin, I just want to recap what yesterday's lesson was about. Yesterday was we took a system of equations like such and we solved it by elimination. Uh, what we needed for elimination, first of all, why did we call it elimination? Here's why. Because when you have opposites in the variables, like negative 2x and positive 2x, those became uh, zero, or those, in other words, were eliminated from the problem. And then all you had to do was uh, add everything else, like such, right? And so, Let's see what happens. 4y equals 8. Divide by 4, you get y equals 2. And that wasn't the end of the story yesterday. Once you got y equals 2, you took that value and you went all the way to the beginning. And you put the value in for y. And then you solved that equation. And then you got what x equals. Which in this case, let's see if we can do it mentally. Uh, y equals 2, so that means that 3 times 2 would equal 6. So I know that this would equal 6 right here. I'm just going to put a 6. Um, and then negative 2x plus 6 equals 12. Let's see if I can... Hmm, let's see if I can do the work up here, because I think you could probably see it pretty well up here. So we have negative 2x plus 6 equals 12. And then if you subtract 6 from each side... Watch what happens. And then, uh, so x would equal negative 3. So yesterday, this is what the lesson was about, was we, uh, we got opposites going on in the two equations, and then once you added them together, that eliminated that variable. So you were left with like this really easy equation at the bottom. Okay? Uh, today we're going to do uh, something different. Today we're going to do another method called substitution. And so if you, I'm going to give you guys a few quick seconds, make sure that you are at uh, the assignment that you need to be. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second because I keep getting emails. Oh, there we go. Emily Castillo is on. That's good. Okay. Let's let's see. So we're here. Okay. Oh yeah, I just had to check. So there's two viewers here? What? Is there a way that I can turn the chat on so you guys can actually comment on this? That would be one very useful thing. So give me two seconds while I do that because I don't know quite how to do it. Maybe these settings here? Ooh, here we go. I'm gonna enable I can't enable the chat, oh my goodness. Because this is made for kids. Dang. Okay. I'm going to edit the settings uh, for tomorrow. And tomorrow there will be a chat available. Okay, everybody? But right now, it's not going to work, sadly. But let me show you the system of equations that we had. So it looks like this. Let me enlarge this so that you can see it even better. Let's see. All right, boom. You got a big system of equations right there. So I'm going to go ahead and erase 
my whiteboard. I'm going to use a whiteboard today, I think. Because on a whiteboard, I can show... I think I could probably fit more work onto the whiteboard. Okay? So let me just enlarge this a little bit. Boom. Okay, so we have the system of equations 6x minus 5y equals 15. Okay? 6x minus 5y equals 15. And we also have the equation x equals y plus 3. Now, this is kind of a tricky uh, system of equations. At, fir at the first glance, people think it's tricky because they see this isn't, this one's in standard form, the top one. And then the second one is like, it looks way different. It starts with x and then it equals y plus 3. But watch this x equals y plus 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to put a box around the expression y plus 3. Because this is the same thing as x, yes? x equals y plus 3. So I'm going to take this expression and I am going to substitute it into the other expression uh, instead of x. So when I rewrite this, instead of 6x, you're going to have 6 times this expression, y plus 3. Okay? And then you write down the rest of the equation. So minus 5y equals 15. Now, the reason I did that is because back uh, before we did that, look at this. We have two types of variables. We have x and y. But now that I put this expression in, instead of x, look, there's just y. So all I have to do now is use the math that I already know. I know how to use distributive property. So 6 times y is 6y. 6 times 3 is 18, minus 5y equals 15. It's get like, with every step, it's getting easier and easier, right? So let me, let me enlarge this just a little bit more because there we go. Okay, let's continue. So 6y and minus 5y, those can be combined. What's 6y minus 5y? You get 1y plus 18 equals 15. Okay, let's keep going. How do I get y by itself? It's almost by itself. Whoops. I can just turn the box, right? Hold on, give me a sec. Excellent. Okay, so we got plus 18 on each side, so let's do minus 18 to get rid of it. And watch what happens. Plus 18, minus 18 gone. So we are just left with 1y equals uh, 15 minus 18. That's a little number minus a big number. So that's going to be negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to put a big box around that. All right, uh, y equals 3. I'm sorry, y equals negative 3. Now I'm not done yet. Remember, you take this value right here, y equals negative 3, and you bring it all the way back to one of the original equations. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into this equation right here, the second one, all right? So let's do that real quick. I'm going to rewrite the second equation uh, over here. Watch this. So x equals the value of y is negative 3. So put in the value negative 3. And then write down the rest of the equation, plus 3. So watch this. Negative 3 plus 3 means that x equals 0. So that means you got x equals 0 and y equals negative 3. Now, the reason they call this substitution, so yesterday's lesson, substitution. Wow, I almost forgot how to spell substitution. Uh, yesterday's lesson was called elimination because we eliminated one of the variables by making them opposites. Now we call this substitution because we took this whole expression right here, y plus 3, and we substituted it into x. And then once we did that, this is what we got. And then once we solved that equation, we got y equals negative 3. And then once you took that value of y equals negative 3 and used it to find the value of x, you get that x equals 0. So let's write both of them right next to each other. x equals 0, y equals negative 3. 
And that's your answer. Let's go ahead and enter that. X equals negative 3. Y. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. X equals 0. I almost copied it wrong. X equals 0. Y equals negative 3. And check it. All right. Okie doke. Let's keep going. So now we have another system of equations. All right. I'm going to let you pause this video so you can possibly pa uh, copy down anything that you need to here. And now I'm going to erase. <laughs> Let's do another system of equations. So another pair of equations. Let's do it. We got 10x. I got to look. I got to be looking at the. Oh, that's blurry. Okay, 10x minus 9y equals 24. And we also have y equals x minus 2. So y equals x minus 2. So check it out. When we have y equals x minus 2, all you have to do is, if you have the single letter y equals x minus 2, you take the expression that that letter y equals. So in this case, the expression is x minus 2. All right. And then you take that x minus 2 and you put it in uh, wherever there's the letter y. So I'm going to draw an arrow and you're going to substitute that expression instead of y. So let's try that real quick. Okay. We got, I'm going to use a different color marker now that I'm substituting. So we have 10x minus 9y, but in this case, y is this expression. So x minus 2. Uh, equals 24. Okay, let's use distributive property. Negative 9 times x and negative 9 times negative 2. So let's do both of those. Negative 9 times x, that's going to be minus 9x. Then we do negative 9 times negative 2, that's going to be a plus 18. And then 10x, well, 10x can just come down. And equals 24 can just come down. So we did the, the distributive property. Now let's combine like terms. Do you see these two variables here? I want you at home to combine those, 10x minus 9x. 10x minus 9x, uh, hopefully you are thinking 10x minus 9x equals 1x uh, plus 18 equals 24. And then I think we could solve this one even mentally. Something plus 18 equals 24. Well, let's just do the steps. Minus 18, minus 18. If you subtract 18 from each side, I'm going to write the answer over here. X equals uh, 24, 24 minus 18. That's going to be a 6, I believe. So we have found the first value, X equals 6. Okay? Now, this X equals 6, you're going to take this value and you're going to put it into one of these two equations. You're either going to put it in this one or in this one. I urge you to pick which one do you think looks easier to solve, the second one or the first one? I want to say that the second one looks easier because it has less stuff all over it. So I'm going to take this value of x and put it into that value of x right there. So let's solve. Actually, I should probably do the arrow. I should probably just do the arrow here, right? Boom. Okay. This is going to be y equals 6 minus 2. And then uh, y equals 6 minus 2. Well, that means that y equals 4. Okay? y equals 4. So that means I'm going to put a box around that. And that means that x equals 6, y equals 4. The official way to write the answer is 6, 4, like an ordered pair. But Khan Academy is asking for x equals and y equals, so let's just do that. x equals 6, y equals 4. x equals 6, y equals 4, and check it. Hooray. Let's see how many people are in here. Three people, wow. I'm, I'm inspired by you guys. I'm so inspired that you guys are getting up. Uh, I'm so sorry. I wish I had the chat open because I know that you guys would probably be saying some very hilarious things right now. 
and I would like to have that mood booster, but just the fact that you're here and that I see that there's people checking it out, four people checking it out now, wow. Guys, uh, I'm gonna make sure that the chat uh, tomorrow is open so that you can uh, you know, speak your mind and ask any questions during this, this lesson. I think the reason that it doesn't have the chat open right now is because when I make this stream, um, I write, what do I put? The setting is like that it's made for kids and so it doesn't allow chat for some reason. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna try to figure out a way so that you can actually participate and whatnot. Okay, moving on to the next problem. Let's see, third problem. Uh, here we have another one. So I'm gonna erase this. <clears throat> so I personally enjoy the, the method from yesterday, elimination. I prefer that method instead of uh, substitution, but it all depends. Sometimes the substitution method is the, is the easier one. But most of the time, I'm going to use elimination. The only time I'm actually going to use substitution is like, look at the second equation that I'm writing here. Only when I have a letter, like a single letter, like x equals something, or y equals something. If I have this, then I'm going to use substitution. Because watch, x equals this expression. So I'm going to take this expression right here. And I am going to, it says x equals that expression. So I'm going to take that whole expression and I'm going to put it into the place of x. All right. Once I put it into the place of x, uh, it's going to be rewritten like this. Negative 7 times uh, this expression. And then the rest of the equation. So let's see what happens here. Negative seven times negative three. Negative times a negative is a positive 21 y. Uh, negative seven times uh, positive eight, it's gonna be minus 56. And then minus six y comes down and then equals four comes down. So all we did was the distributive property. Let's keep going, 21 y minus 6y can come together because they're like terms. 21y minus 6y, I believe that is 15y. If I'm wrong, and I have been, please uh, don't hesitate to correct me, okay? In some way, send me an email right now. Uh, okay, now we just have an equation that we need to solve for y, okay? So that's what we did. We substituted this expression into the first equation, and now we're solving the first equation. So put add 56 on each side of the equation. I am going to continue my work up here, okay? Uh, when we do that, we have negative 56 plus 56 gets crossed out. And then we're left with, on the first side, we're left with just this, 15y. On the second side, we're left with 4 plus 56, which is 60. Okay? And then the last thing we need to do is get rid of that 15 coefficient. So if you divide by 15 on each side, you're left with y equals 60 divided by 15. It's going to be 4. Hopefully you knew that one. So... Again, we're half we're more than halfway done. We already got one of the answers, but we just need to take this y equals 4 and place it into uh, to me it looks like the second equation looks easier. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the second equation but with y equals 4, okay? So, let's do it. x equals -3 times 4 plus 8. Okay? Let's do this math. -3 times 4, that's going to be a -12. And then if you do negative 12 plus 8, I should write my final answer in a different color because it's starting to get a little confusing. Uh, negative 12 plus 8, x equals negative 4, I believe. And so we're left with x equals negative 4, and then y equals 4, which I'm going to rewrite up here so that I have both my answers together. Negative 4 plus 4. Uh, negative 4 is x, positive 4 is y. So let's enter that x equals negative 4, y equals 4. 
I haven't made any silly mistakes so far today. That's exciting. It's very exciting. Three of you in here watching. Thank you so much. Again, the rest of us will probably catch it later on. That's all right. So if you feel ready, please take a look. Again, we all got the same problem set, so um, you can always just try this one on your own and then come back to the video later. But <clears throat> I think you can do this one on your own. Let's, let's do it. I'm going to solve mine. How about this? I'm going to solve mine silently. And I'm going to be asking you. It's going to be like Dora the Explorer, all right? I'm going to ask you for steps along the way. You answer them at home. And then I just do them like Dora. All right, y equals 2x plus 9. Okay, so we're going to do substitution. So we have this equation and this equation. y equals 2x plus 9. I'm, I'm going to use a few words. <laughs> um, y equals 2x plus 9. So draw an arrow to the letter where you're going to place it and do some math. Oh my gosh, silence is golden. That's called the distributive property. Bring everything down. Combine these. Solve for x here. Let's see what happens here. 90 minus 90 is gone, so we're left with 27x equals 36 minus 90. Let's see. Well, 90 minus 36 is 54. Yep. So this would be negative 54. So let me see if I can find a place where I can write this. 27x equals negative 54. I, w I wonder if there's even a visible clue there. Yeah, OK. Divide by 27, divide by 27. And you're left with x equals negative 2. OK? x equals negative 2. So now that you have x equals negative 2, I want you to think, what am I going to do with this x equals negative 2 that will help me find the value of y? OK, so hopefully you're thinking, oh, I'm going to take this value right here, x equals negative 2, and I'm going to place it into uh, one of the original equations. OK? So if you do that, it will be rewritten like this. y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 9. Oh, this would be easy math. 2 times negative 2, I should get you negative 4. And 9 plus negative 4, that would get you a 5. y equals 5. So I'm going to rewrite that again down here. Those are my two answers, OK? My two answers down here at the bottom. So x equals negative 2, y equals 5. I'm going to. I'm going to mute this video capture here for a second because I keep getting emails. OK. All right, people are checking in, being present. That's very good. Very good, everybody. All right. Um, yeah, let's come back to the let's come back to the problem. Oh, my goodness. People checking in left and right. That's amazing. I'm so happy. All right. Y equals negative two. I mean, I'm sorry, x equals negative 2, and y equals 5. And check it. Hooray. Very, very cool. All right. So again, there on the sidebar, once you click on this assignment, there might be some recommendation videos. Uh, you can watch those if you want, but uh, I'm only going by what the assignments are in your assignment tab. So the next thing that you have is systems of equations word problems so i'm going to click on that how long we've been going 24 minutes good 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 
So here's the systems of equations word problems. <clears throat> so now that we've solved these word problems, I mean, now that we've solved these systems of equations, now what we're going to learn to do is we're going to read a story. Once we read the story, we will write down two equations. Okay, so that might take us a little bit of practice, but that's okay. We're going to read the story. We're going to write two equations. And once you write two equations, I'm going to give you three options, all right? So here's the three options, or here's the three methods real quick that we've learned so far. So number one, here's the methods we've we've uh, used, all right? So I want you to write this down if you have a notebook with you. Solving systems of equations. The first method we did was graphing. Graphing, you can use uh, a piece of paper or you can go to desmos.com. Uh, if you do the graphing method, you just graph both the equations and you see where do the two lines cross. And that is your solution. So I kind of draw I'll kind of draw like a symbol for that. Right? That's the graphing uh, method right there. The number two method we learned, which was yesterday, that was elimination. Elimination. And for that, we need to, I'm going to write need to have opposites. By that, I mean uh, in the two equations, you need to have like a positive 2x and a negative 2x so that they can cancel out each other. So that was yesterday's method. I personally really like that method. And then a lot of people really like this method, which is the substitution method, which is all that we did today. That was when we had an equation that was y equals or x equals, all right? Um, so we are going to use, you can use whatever method you want, all right? Uh, personally, I like the graphing method, and since you have computers at home, I think this would be the easiest method. But uh, I'm gonna mix it up, I'll, I might use I might use the graphing calculator on one problem, and then we'll probably use substitution and elimination on other problems. So make sure that you have these three methods written down. And now, let's switch over to chalk. Uh, I am going to, we're gonna look at this story, and we're gonna write an equation about it, or two equations about it, okay? So let's scroll so you can see it. Scroll up. All right. So it says here, Giselle works as a carpenter and a blacksmith. Um, she earns a total of $20 per hour as a carpenter and $25 per hour as a blacksmith. Uh, last week, Giselle worked both jobs for a total of 30 hours and earned a total of $690. Uh, dollars. How long did Giselle work as a carpenter last week and how long did she work as a blacksmith? So let's write down some expressions. So as a carpenter, as a carpenter, uh, let's write something down. So, hmm, I'm gonna write this down. We gotta need we need to have variables in this equation. So I'm gonna write the variable h is equal to the number of hours uh, worked. Hours worked, and then actually, no, we're going to do this. I'm going to do uh, C is going to be hours worked uh, as a carpenter. So I'm going to write carp, going to abbreviate there. C equals hours worked as a carpenter, and B is going to be the hours worked as a blacksmith, okay? So hours worked blacksmith. Okay, because she worked, um, Giselle worked two different kinds, uh, two different hours for each work, for each job, she worked a different amount of time. So for the carpenter job, she earns, actually, let's do this. So here's C is her hours worked as a carpenter. B is her hours worked as a blacksmith. And if you add up her total hours, how many total hours was that? In the problem, it says that the total hours were 30, right? So that's one equation. 
that is one equation. And the second equation is going to be uh, the money. So let's see, Twen the value of her money. So $20 per hour as a carpenter is gonna be $20 times however many hours she worked as a carpenter. And her other money is gonna be $25 times however many hours she worked as a blacksmith, okay? Uh, and then what was the total amount of money that she earned? It was 690. So we are about to find out, after you write these two equations, this was actually the tricky part of the problem because a lot of people, this is the translating into the language of math part of the problem. So we just translated these uh, this into equations, all right? Now we can use uh, substitution, elimination, or graphing. All right, uh, personally, I think I wanna use elimination. All right, so what I am going to do is, uh, do you see how we don't, I'm gonna make sure that we have opposites, okay? So here we have one C, one B, uh, and that's not the opposite of 20 C or 25 B. So what's the opposite of 20 C? The opposite of 20 C is negative 20 C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top equation and I'm going to turn this into negative 20C. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the whole top equation by negative 20. All right. Uh, if I multiply by negative 20, I got to do the distributive property, which I'm kind of like drawing backwards here. Like I put the number after, but it still works the same way. Uh, so let me write down to negative 20 times C, that's negative 20 C. Uh, negative 20, let me, let me grow this real quick. There we go. Negative 20 times B is negative 20 B. And then negative 20 times 30, well, two times three is six. So this is gonna be negative six, and then there's two zeros. So negative 600. So now, now that I have, uh, I've taken my first equation and I multiplied the whole thing by negative 20. The reason I did that is because now, look at this, now we have opposites right here. So once we have opposites, now you can combine them too. 20C plus negative 20C, gone. And so we're left with 25B plus negative 20B. That's gonna be 5B, that's like subtraction. 5B equals 690 plus negative 600, that equals 90. And that means that five times B equals 90. Well, divide by five on each side. Let's see if we can, is it possible to show that? There we go. Divide by five on each side. And we are left with uh, B equals 90 divided by five. If you use your calculator or you do it by hand, you will get B equals 18, okay? And by this point, we just found out that the number of hours that she worked as a blacksmith was 18 hours. In fact, I'm gonna put 18 hours here. Now, here's how we could easily find her, uh, her hours worked as a carpenter. So her total hours worked was 30. We knew that at the beginning. So she already worked 18 hours as a blacksmith, so how many more hours does she need to work the full 30? 12 hours, okay? So she worked as a carpenter for 12 hours and she worked as a blacksmith for 18 hours, okay? So we are going to go ahead and go here. Carpenter was C equals 12, so carpenter was 12 hours. Blacksmith was 18 hours and let's check it. Hooray. Let's check who's joining us here. Two people, that's awesome. I think one of them is me. So that means there's one student in here watching, which is welcome. I wonder who it is. All right, I could probably check who's doing Khan Academy right now and see, but uh, I'd rather keep it a surprise. I'm sure I'll know who it is. Okay, here we go. Oh, my ankle just cracked badly. Okay, so let's look at this story. Eudora, Eudora, wow, what a name. 
give me a sec here. Eudora ran home to her secret laboratory at an average speed of 12 kilometers per hour. She then took one of her jetpacks and flew to her school at an average of speed of 76 mile, uh, kilometers per hour. Eudora traveled a total distance of 120 kilometers and the entire trip took two hours. How long did Eudora spend running and how long did she spend using her jetpack? So again, we're gonna set up the system of equations which means we're gonna write both equations right now. And then you're gonna solve it using whatever method you want. So let me enlarge my blackboard and let's try to write the two equations. A good place to start writing equations is by looking at, by starting with variables. So I know that she was, I know that she spent time running, so maybe I should do one variable as r, which means time spent running. And then she was also on her jetpack time spent running and she was also on her jetpack which means j equals uh, time on jetpack I'm gonna I'm just gonna write time on eh, I'll write the full word time on jetpack okay so she did two things so I'm gonna take her total time spent running on her total time spent running plus her total time on the jetpack how much was that total time, that total trip that she made? Uh, so in her total trip from her laboratory to home and then to school, uh, her total journey took uh, two hours. So I'm gonna write the time spent on running and the time spent on the jetpack all together equals two hours. R plus J equals two, okay? R plus J equals two hours. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, do her speed. So her speed, well, while she was running, her speed was 12 kilometers uh, per hour. So I'm going to do 12 kilometers times however many hours she spent running. And then I'm going to take her jetpack speed, which was 76 kilometers per hour, and I'll do 76 times how many hours she did on the jetpack, right? Right? If you do both of those things, you will get a total of 120 kilometers. Okay, this one I am going to do graphing, okay? Now, the only thing you have to be careful about is when you do graphing is this. Uh, when you do graphing, if you go onto desmos.com, desmos is not gonna let you use the variables r and j. They want you to use the regular variables x and y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make running is gonna be the x axis. So I'm gonna put like a little x right up there. And uh, the jetpack is gonna be the y axis. That kind of makes sense because if you're running, you're just going side to side. And if you're on the jetpack, you're going up and down. So that's that's how I'm gonna remember the x and the y. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these equations, but instead of r and j, I'm gonna write x and y. Okay. So I'm gonna do both those equations on desmos.com. So give me a second while I get to that website. So I hope you can see that I am on desmos.com and I'm going to shrink this so that you can see my equations. So let's shrink, shrink, shrink. We gotta shrink the blackboard too. Got to shrink everything. Here we go. I wonder why. Huh. That's odd. Okay. So uh, let's write these equations here. So r plus j equals 2. Well, remember, we can't use r and j. So we got to use x plus y equals 2. Next equation. We're going to do much the same way. The other equation was 12r, so I'm going to do 12x plus 76y equals 120 kilometers. So check it out. I hope you can see that kind of. I might have to move the, might have to shrink it a little bit more. So there we go. I wrote both equations and it gave me an instant graph of both of these. 
So if you go to this instant graph and you click on the intersection point, you see 0 0.5 and 1.5. So the way we're going to write our answer is this. The first number was x, which was r. So we know that r equals 0 0.5 hours, which means a half hour, which means 30 minutes, right? How do, how do I write this? I'm just going to write it underneath. 30 mins, OK? Um, the other variable was 1.5. So we know that J, the jetpack time, was she was on the jetpack for 1.5 hours. And 1.5 hours, that's one and a half hours. You know that's a total of 90 minutes. So let's go ahead and here they ask for hours. So she, she ran for 0 0.5 hours and she flew for 1.5 hours. So again, if you use the if you use the graphing calculator way, that's just desmos.com, all you have to do is enter the equations and it will graph them automatically for you. So if you learn how to do that, that's perfect. That's a really good skill and I don't mind if you use that way. Okay? Let's keep going. Next question. Um so we did so far we did elimination and we also did graphing. Um, again, I'm, I'm just gonna go with whatever seems easy at the moment. Uh, I don't really care which one you pick. Substitution is usually easy whenever, I'll show you when it's easy, but so far we haven't had any examples where substitution is the easiest way. So let's enlarge this story and try to solve this one, yeah? Whoa, okay. So it says here, the combined average weight of an okapi is 450, an okapi and a llama is 450 kilograms. <clears throat> the average weight of three llamas is 190 kilograms more than the average weight of one okapi. Okay, let's do variables. So I'm gonna say the letter O, actually I'm gonna use X, all right? The letter X is gonna be the weight of an okapi. So I'm going to write x equals okapi weight. You should do this too. x equals okapi weight. y equals llama weight. So we're going to write an equation having to do with the weights of these. So let's see. The combined weight of an okapi and a llama is 450. Uh, and when they say combined average weight, when they say combined average weight, they don't mean take the average of these two. They're just saying like, hey, on average, this is what an okapi plus a llama would weigh. So let's do an okapi plus a llama. Their weights together would equal 450. That's pretty good. The second equation says the average weight of three llamas, so 3y, is 190 kilograms more than the average weight of one okapi. So that means you got to be careful here. So when it says three llamas is 190 kilograms more, that means that if you take the okapi, if you take the okapi and you add 190 kilograms, like if you, here's the okapi, if you make that 190 kilograms more, it will equal this. So that means you have to put, uh, plus 190. So there's kind of two ways you can write it. You can write uh, th three llamas is equal to an okapi plus 190 kilograms. Or you can write three llamas, and then if you take away 190 from that side, you should get the weight of, of an okapi. So I'm going to write it like this, OK? Because check this out. Oh, I should probably enlarge this now. So check this out. You should have both of these equations here. The first one was kind of easy. The second one was a little tricky. <clears throat> but check this out. I'm going to use the substitution method in this case. So I'm going to take x equals this expression. I'm going to take this whole expression. And since x equals that expression, that means that I can take this whole thing 
and put and substitute it in for x okay so let's just see what happens if we do that put that whole expression there instead so 3y minus 190 so that's a that's a no copy right there um, and then we're gonna write the rest of the equation plus y equals 450 so this is the substitution method we just took this expression and substitute it into here so now we have this okay uh, let's do 3y plus 1y that comes out to be 4y and then you bring down minus 190 still equals 450 again uh, you could always graph these but I'm trying to show all three ways going on right now okay uh, this equation right here you would you want to get y by itself and so the first thing you would do is add 190 to each side so let me let me write a little bit over here uh, if you add 190 to each side which I will do on down here if you add 190 to each side let's see what you would get uh, these would be gone 190 minus 190 is gone you'd be left with 4y equals uh, 450 plus 190 what is that 640 so 4y equals 640 so I'm gonna write that here 4y equals 640 and then you divide by 4 on each side and you would get y equals here's how you divide by 4 mentally remember remember that trick we learned back at school you have to cut it in half twice so what's half of 640 that's 320 and then half of 320 is 160 so that means that y equals 160 so the weight of a llama is 160 kilograms okay Wow, I didn't know that an okapi was so big then. Because let's take the weight of this llama. Let's take the weight of this llama and let's uh, use it to find the weight of the okapi. So the llama, the llama was y. So the llama was this. So that means that x plus, I'm sorry. Yeah, x plus 160 is 450. So let me just show my work down here. I'm going to do uh, x plus 160 x plus 160 equals 450 and then I'm gonna subtract 160 from each side this is like tiny and so if you do that you would get x equals uh, 450 minus 160 let me see is that 290 so there you go there's both weights right there uh, the weight of an okapi, which is X, that's 290, and the llama is 160. I thought I thought an okapi was like a fish. I didn't even know that's what it was. So an okapi is 290, that's a big boy. And then the llama is 160, that's also a big boy. And let's check it. Hooray. I think we're almost done here. Yep, we're almost done. Next question. I think... I think for this one, I'm just going to show you how to set it up, and then you will choose to use substitution, elimination, or graphing uh, for this one. Because this one's pretty pretty easy to set up. It says here, Michael breeds, Michael breeds chickens and ducks. Last month, he sold 50 chickens and 30 ducks for $550. So here, ch C equals number of chickens, number of chickens. and what is it d d equals ducks so d equals number of ducks and so the total equation is going to be uh 50 chickens oh wait no 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 i'm sorry they already told us the number of chickens so c does not equal the number of chickens c c does not equal the number of chickens c equals price of a chicken price of chicken and D is going to be price of duck price of duck 
okay? It's gonna be price. So if we do the price equation, that means that if we, he said he bought, sold 50 chickens, so that's gonna be 50 times the price of a chicken plus 30 times the price of a duck equals 550. And then this month he sold 44 chickens, so he said 44 times the price of a chicken and then he also sold 36 ducks, so that's 36 times how, however much a duck costs. He's making a lot of money. It's 532. So if you write these two equations, your goal now, I think the easiest way to do this one, personally, I think the easiest way to do this one is graphing. But you instead of C and D, you gotta use the variables X and Y. Uh, in the equation. So when you rewrite this equation, you got to do 50x plus 30y equals 550 and 44x plus 36y equals 532. If you use x and y and you use desmos.com, uh, if you use that website, it will show you the graph of the lines and where they cross. So I want you to practice that way or you can... Um, you know, I would prefer that you do that way because um, that would be the easiest way for this problem right here. And also, we're kind of running out of time, so, you know, I want to give you a chance to try that on your own, okay? Have a wonderful day. Uh, be good. And I'm going to do the 10th, not the 10th grade, 7th grade class now. So, have a great day.